Hey, what's up, Creekside family? It's Matt Rao here, pastor with the Student Ministries. Uh, and hey, I am bringing this episode of Looking Up, which is a little bit of a continuation from where uh, Tony Bell left us on Friday. Because um, I want to start in James chapter 4 and kind of make a connection here um, with, with a really cool key word that comes from James chapter 4, verse 5. And that verse says, Or do you suppose that it is to no purpose that Scripture says, He yearns jealously over the Spirit that He has made to dwell in us? I love, I love that picture, that idea, that phrasing of, Do you not know that He yearns jealously? He yearns jealously over the spirit that he made to dwell within us. Talking, God yearns. There's a deep longing for yours and my spirit, for our being, for everything within us. What a sweet thing to know. What a truth to hang on to and cling to. Like it's not just like a, oh he he would like for us to come to a, to him and and he would like for us to be con- uh, connected. But if not, that's okay too. No, no, no. The God of the universe yearns deeply, jealously for you and for me. And I want to jump over uh, to Psalm 63, too, um, to kind of continue this idea of of yearning. Because Psalm 63, verse 1 says, O God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So, so here, uh, David is giving us this picture that just like in a dry, barren wasteland, our flesh, our souls thirst and yearn for God as well. Like what a cool connection. Not only is the God of the universe yearning after, longing after us, but we, our flesh, our, our spirits within us, we long and yearn for him. And our world provides so many distractions and other things that we can look to or cling to uh, for that satisfaction to fulfill that longing that we feel within us. And yet scripture is clear that, that, that the longing, the emptiness that we feel, the separation that we feel within us, it can't be satisfied by anything else because our flesh and soul cry out for the living God. Our flesh and our spirit and our, our, everything within us yearns to be connected to him once again. And um, we'll come right back to John or uh, back to um, Psalm 63. But where I want us to jump to real quick is John chapter 4 in verse 23 and 24 says, But an hour is coming and now is. This is Jesus talking. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and and in truth, for such people, the Lord, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I think those are two really cool words here because we, he's longing for us to recognize our spiritual need for him. God is longing for us to recognize and worship him in recognizing the emptiness that we experience apart from him. So that humility before him comes from an inward recognition that apart from him, we are going to be left longing to fill that space because we are created for connection and relationship with him. How sweet is that? So we need to recognize our deep spiritual longing and need for God and then then worship him in truth. Learning, recognizing, and proclaiming the truth of who God is. That that when we come to worship him, if we're going to truly worship in spirit and in truth, we get to worship from a, a humble standpoint before him, but also proclaiming the truth of his unchanging character. And Psalm 63 continues uh, with a little bit more practical uh, applications even to this concept. Uh, and in verse 3, it, it picks up and says, Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. Like, what a sweet truth to just cling to, that his steadfast love is better than life. Have you experienced that? Have you allowed yourself to, to rest in that truth? 
Have you have you done like more research and studying to look to understand what his steadfast love truly means for you and I? Because it is the truth is that it's better than life. That nothing that this life has to offer surpasses the truth of how incredible his steadfast love is. Verse 4 continues, So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. What a sweet thing that when we come to recognize the truth of who God is, of his character, of his steadfast, relentless love, when we come to recognition of the realities of who he is, we can. the only appropriate response is to praise him with joyful lips. Have you, what do you have to be pray for, or joyful for? What do you have to praise God for here and now, today, this week? When we come to recognize these things, the only thing we can do is respond through praise, respond through joy. And I love the reminder of verse eight. Like, what are you allowing your soul to cling to? Where are you looking to satisfy the longing and the yearning of our flesh and spirit? I'm, I've been faced with this question and, and even just the idea of that David says, when I met, remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, what are you meditating on when you lay down to go to sleep? I, I know I'm challenged by that because sometimes it's easy for me just to throw on the same Netflix show that I've been watching all week. Or, or sometimes it's easier to check now with sports, my fantasy lineup. Or, or maybe it's even just diving into a book. Nothing, none of these things are bad. But when they take the, the, the focus away from meditating on the Lord, meditating in the watches of the night, having our hearts and souls cling to Him, that's when they become distractions. And so again, I'm right there. I'm just sharing from my own challenge but I desire and want to grab hold of what Psalm 63 is telling us. To meditate on the Lord. Cling to Him. Allow our souls cling to God. Because it's in the shadow of His wings that we sing for joy. And it's His right hand that will uphold us in this life. And it is His steadfast love that is better than life itself. So let, let us rest in that. I, pr- I encourage you to get some time in prayer about that and even getting some time journaling, maybe writing out some thoughts, maybe writing out some things that you have uh, in, going on in your life that are worthy of praise and maybe some things that you have going on in your life that are challenging right now, but that, that you can continually give over to the Lord. Thankful for you guys. Pray that this is an encouragement for you. And hey, let us be true worshipers of God humbling ourselves before him and recognizing not only our, that the yearning within us yearns for him, but that the God of this universe yearns jealously for you. Love you guys. See you soon.